Hi there and welcome to my channel. Today's project is for the Vicky Beauty and Design team and this week we're still working in with the journaling ephemera from the Field Notes collection. And I love this pack of ephemera because it gives you a lot of options. It has frames, it has phrases, little journaling spots, a few sentences, a few tags that can actually help you. And in my case, they're going to help me make this layout really, really quickly. So I'm starting with a yes or foundation paper. And my idea is I went through the entire pack and I was really um, drawn to the frames and the journaling ephemera. And I pull out this picture. This is one from our Mother's Day, this, this year's Mother's Day. And these are my three kids. And whenever I get them, like, you know, together and in a good mood, I should take a picture because they're teenagers. So one picture is all I'm going to get. So my idea for this particular layer is have a cascade of frames behind the picture. And I'm going to have them in different ways. And I, like I said, I pulled everything from the journal spot. And I'm liking how it looks like, but I'm not liking the black frames, the little edges. So my choice is going to be to actually trim that black um, from the frames. And I'm going to actually pull another frame from the All the Good Things collection, uh, Frames and Tags pack. Because it just had the same tones. And I want to have something, like I said, cascading behind the picture. Now you're going to see me play with a few of the formations. Once I'm happy with what it's going to look like an idea, I'm going to go ahead and mark it with a pencil just to give me a, def not a define, but to give me an idea where the limit or the corners of the frames are going to be. It's just going to help me with my mixed media. So once I have that done, I am going to use the ink spilled uh, stencil and I'm going to use these big circles of dashes and uh, dots and crosses and just to add a, a little bit of texture on the background. And for this, I'm going to use the SO. And having marked with a pencil the little corners, it's just going to give me an idea of how far or how close I can put the little dashes. And as you can see, all I'm doing is adding a little bit of, um, yes, yeah, so using a palette knife. And I'm being, um, I'm not being careful to complete the circle. I'm just making one run. Like when you're using uh, mixed media or, sorry, like um, modeling paste or in this case, yes, so or the glazes, Remember just to go one way when you're applying the media through the stencil. That way you will avoid the bleeding from uh, underneath um, the stencil and you will have the defined shape. Now, I set it aside to dry. Yes, so it dries pretty fast, especially now in Toronto. We have the heaters on. It dries a little bit faster. So what I'm going to do is uh, the frames that I'm going to actually use them, they have a lot of pinks and fuchsias and a little bit of yellow in the background. So I'm going to pull a color that's complemental, but in the same kind of family. So I'm going to use a lot of oranges, well, not oranges, peach, this ochre tone, like a yellow golden tone, and this little brownish maroon tone that is from the warm and the neutral set. So my idea is, since I have yes to the background, this one is going to help because um, it's going to make the water run easily on the paper without warping it. And you're going to see that what I'm doing is, I pull out, like I said, I started with the peach. I'm scribbling a little bit of the crayon on an acrylic sheet, adding a bit of water to create watercolor. And then I'm just gonna spray a little bit of water onto my paper. Thank God I've yes to this paper, so you, like the water's gonna stay afloat of the paper. And I'm gonna add the pigment and just move it gently with my uh, water brush in this case, just to create what I call a blob of watercolor. And I choose these colors because they mingle nicely, they fuse, and uh, without leaving me a defined line, they're the same color family. They're um, the great. And actually, one of the things that I love about it is that it's actually going to bring the pink outside. You see on the side too that I have my phone. And it's because when I created the formation of the frame, I took a picture of it just to give me an idea so that I don't forget. Trust me, uh, it has to. I was really sick a couple of weeks ago, a really bad cold. And I don't know if maybe it's the age too. I'm starting to forget something. So it's better to take a picture. So, um, Sorry about that. I'm just digressing. It's the first time that I'm doing a voiceover in like almost three weeks. So what I'm doing right now is uh, I'm bringing in a little bit of the pink. And I'm using the fuchsia cream. And I'm going to use the, it's the deep uh, red kind of tone that comes in the warm set. Just to bring a little bit of the hints of red and pink onto the background. And that's pretty much it. You're going to see that, like I said, I am being, not even being careful where I'm adding just in the sense that, I know what the limit of my watercolor are going to be, but I am not being like a, how do I say it? In an order, there's different tones, different colors, all in the same collection. It looks great. It looks like a watercolor. I love the way it looks. And just to finish, if you see my work, then you know that I love splatters. 
So I'm adding splatters of the colors that I've added on the background just to give accent the color because I like that messy look. And I'm gonna set it aside to dry. And like I mentioned before, because the heaters are already on in Toronto, uh, especially in my apartment, um, it's drying really fast, which is great because it helps me, you know, get a layout completed in a really amount of time. Now, what I did after it dried a little bit is I came in with a baby wipe. And all I'm gonna do is start buffing all the yes so uh, texture spots that I created. And I wanted this because I want to bring the whiteness of um, the texture that I added of the yeso. Uh, it's just going to give me a little bit of interest to in the background. Don't forget that quite a bit of this is going to be uh, covered by the frames, but it's going to peek in between because don't forget the frames are just frames. There's going to be very little inside of them. So I just want to give interest and some texture to the background. And I want these little bumps to show in the case. So I'm going to just going to buff the surface just to bring the whiteness of the yeso. Now, while that's completely drying, I started playing with again with the frames and decided that I don't want to leave them plain. They're like there's they're so thin that they're not helping. I think I want to bulk them up a little bit, but not by adding uh, backing with uh, paper. I'm gonna back them with vellum. I just want the softness of the vellum, and I think the softness of the vellum, that opacity that it adds, it's just gonna help me sell the edges of the frame better, give a little bit more definition without taking away from the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually do a little bit of vellum to pretty much all the frames, but the biggest one. And I didn't do it to the biggest one because it's pretty much gonna be behind the picture. You're barely gonna see it. But then the rest are gonna be pretty much on their own. So I wanna, like I said, I wanna add a little bit of extra to the, the to those frames. Now you're gonna see again that I'm just setting back again the way that it's gonna be on the layout. And I think that I wanna add another layer of interest to the background. Like I said, it's very plain, very simple background. So my choice is I'm gonna add butterflies. And again, if you see my work, then you know that I love butterflies and color and rainbow and florals and all the things that are kind of girly. And I really don't care if my son and my baby are there, even though they're boys, I still gonna add butterflies. I'm still gonna play with pink. So all I'm doing is bringing some of the colors that I use in the background using my stencil brush. And I'm gonna use uh, the butterfly stencil. And that is from the all the good things uh, release. So all I'm doing is, since I have the formation of the frames already on the background, I'm just gonna play around with the smaller butterflies. Again, I'm thinking about proportion. I have the picture of the bigger frames at the bottom. So I'm gonna make it look as if the butterflies are flying up, so they're gonna start diminishing in size. So I'm gonna go small to big in this case, not extremely big, but you know, that's the idea. And I'm also playing with the colors along the way. I'm gonna try to match a bit of the colors. I'm gonna, but I don't wanna match them. I wanna get a little bit of a different tone just so they can pop from the background so they just don't become part of the background, but kind of a shadow behind it. My idea was, as I was forming this, is that I wanna, like I said, I'm thinking butterflies are flying behind the, um, the frame. And as I'm building this, I'm thinking, you know what? I think I'm gonna bring in some butterflies onto this layout. And you're gonna see that I should bring them. I go through, uh, while everything sets, I go and fussy cut some butterflies from the one of the papers in the all, all the sorry in the field notes collection. So again, all I'm doing is scribbling the crayon right now. Let's go back to the layer, scribbling the crayon onto a piece of acrylic, picking it up with my stencil brush, and then just carefully um just go in a circular motion on top of the stencil to create the butterflies on the background. And that's about it. Like I said, I'm trying to play with proportions. So smaller frames are gonna get smaller butterflies, bigger frames will get a bigger butterfly and um and also i'm also thinking that i'm placing the i and one of the reasons sorry that i kept the frames just to give me an idea where they're gonna be so i don't hide the butterflies either once i have that done and like i said one of the easiest ways to add mixed media is to use a stencil brush and they are great i want to bring some shine now and for that you saw me that i brought a little bit of the gold glaze i added a little bit of water and then i'm just gonna add splatters on, around the butterflies just to create think of it as the path of the butterfly now while that's drying the gold glaze is going to take a little bit to dry i go went ahead and started adding uh, some paper behind the picture and as you can see those are the papers that i used to cut the flowers from last week's uh, layout and um so i had the leftovers and i just used them to create the layers behind the picture now i'm going to go ahead and start embellishing I, my background is pretty much done so I went back into the journaling uh, spot uh, package, package, sorry. And I just started adding this little, um, it's like a journaling spot. And it said something about uh, 
observations and notes so i just trim a little bit and i'm gonna add it as a layer behind my picture in between the picture and the frame and one of the things that i'm doing is i'm adding a little bit of foam adhesive to the corners of the frame just to give them a little bit of a lift and i'm gonna go ahead and actually build the layout right now and since i have an idea where everything's gonna go you're gonna see that i'm just gonna place them and like I said, I added a little bit of a foam uh, dot behind it just to keep it in place. Sorry about the light. Like I said, very funny days in Toronto. Very sunny at moments. Very, uh, there's a lot of winds, so clouds are moving a lot. And even though I have moved the table away from the windows, you still get that really harsh sun from the fall. Love it. But it is hard when you're um, creating a video. Now, I have set everything uh, already in place. And now I have the title. And this is going to be... Uh, part of my title and i had this in my little box of cutouts and this is from actually just Nick studio and i just wanted it to pop in the from the background so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna add a little bit of that gold glaze that i had watered down into watercolor i'm just gonna add it to the title just to make it like i said i want to keep it in those rich tones but it's gonna pop off the page now since i had some color left uh, behind my idea is i'm gonna bring in a little bit of color onto this layer so you're gonna see that i'm going through the watercolor stickers and um, one of them has some words in it so i'm gonna use that gold paint that i have but i added a little bit of art crayon to it so i'm gonna get the shimmering uh watercolor look to it and i'm just gonna go ahead and add it to a few of the hearts a few flowers you're gonna see that i color a few leaves and the word love because that's gonna be part of my title and I'm gonna set it aside to dry for a little bit. Again, it does not take too long to dry. And like I said, one of the beauties of working with like um, having a focus, in this case, the journal in ephemera was great for me because it just kind of speeded up and took a lot of the guessing and the what am I gonna do from this layer. So as you're gonna see, I just, again, I'm gonna add the title. I'll prop it with a little bit of foam adhesive because I wanna make sure that it, it um, it separates with the picture that it actually uh, sticks out in a way and then i'm just adding all the um leaves and branches and flowers that i actually color with that shimmering watercolor that i created to um create clusters behind the picture i'm gonna create two clusters at the corner at the side where i added those big frames and um that's pretty much it and you're gonna see also that I, like I said, I went ahead and fussy cut some of the papers. And these are the butterflies from one of the papers. I make sure that I cut the ones that had yellows and pinks and a little bit of red. And I just go ahead and glue them onto the layout. I want to make sure that there's one in each of the frames. That it kind of follows the path of the butterflies that I had added with the stencil. After that, I added the watercolor stickers and I kept them white because I want them to pop. And I'm going to add the little puffy stickers, these little circles behind each uh, corner of them, just to give a little bit more attention, bring texture. The only thing that you don't see me add here is that I bring one of those watercolor stickers, you know, those clear ones um, that look like a uh, watercolor with a phrase on it. And I'm just going to add it to the side of the picture. And that's about it. Super simple. It took no time to put together, thankfully, because, they, like I said, the heater is on, so everything is drying really fast. But try it. Um, try the journaling um, ephemera. It will be a great start for a layout. It takes a lot of the guessing game away. And there's so much you can do with it. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. And I would love to see you in the next video. Take care, guys.